Welcome back to chapter 4. We will now get started with linking OSC with the BP Spinner Actor. So in the map, let's drag in BP Spinner to the level and zero out the position. Also, we haven't assigned the camera to this level, so select the camera here and then open the level blueprint. Let's delete the event tick and right click to create a reference to the camera. And then we also need a player controller. And then let's set view target with blend. And link the camera as the target. Do a bit of cleanup. And compile and save. So now when we go back to the level and click play, we have the camera set up correctly. Okay, now we need to create a link between the BP Spinner and OSC. So go to BP Spinner and down here we will create a new variable called BP underscore OSC and change the variable type to BP OSC object reference. And here we will also check the ion so to make it instance editable. Let's compile and save. Go over to map one and click on the BP spinner. Then here we will use the eyedropper tool to select the BP OSC that is in the level. One thing I'll point out is that this is a direct reference to another actor and it's not very good programming practice as it can be a point of failure, especially for a large game. But since I confidently know that I won't touch or make any edits to the actor again for the rest of this project, I can safely do it try to avoid using this and generally it's better to do a get all actors of class cast and do a is valid check so you're not trying to run any code with an invalid reference okay enough theory and let's save and go back to bp spinner and into the event graph and delete the middle one and move event tick up then from event tick drag in bp osc reference then we want to get Excel X and here we directly promote it to a variable enter to confirm and connect it up and move it up also I'll add that depending on what kind of sensor values I'm using sometimes I'll get the value here and use an finterp2 to, to smooth it out um, it acts like a lag chop in touch designer if any of you know it, but in this case, I found that it makes no difference, so I took it out of the code. Okay, now that we have access to the float value, we can now start adding impulse. So first, we will create a custom event and call it add impulse arm1. And after setting Excel X from event tick, we will drag out of here and call this event called add impulse arm1. All right, so what we need to do now is to calculate the impulse vector. So drag in impulse arrow out of here. And you will first need to get the forward vector and get world location. Here is where we have to do some vector math. If you're really serious about doing cool physics stuff in Unreal Engine by yourself, I strongly, strongly recommend taking a linear algebra course if you're still in school. And if you're not in school, you can go through the videos by Khan Academy for fundamentals of vector math. Anyways, we will start by getting Excel X and multiply by a scalar. Let's promote this to a variable called impulse scalar compile and give it a default value of 200 then we will scale up the forward vector that is a unit vector by the result of this multiplication and then we add this result with the world location and then here we have the impulse vector that we need now drag in arm1 and we will use add impulse at location. Connect this up. 
pipe the result into the impulse and the world location to location. And compile and save. Now with this setup, we should be able to swing the phone right and spin the BP spinner counterclockwise. So let's test it out. Go to map 1, make sure your zig sim is running, and click play, then swing to the right. As you can see, it is working nicely. Close it out, and next we will create and add in the Niagara system to produce the particle trails. Before we create the Niagara system, we need to create a material for the particles. So go to the mat folder, right click, create material, and call it M underscore NS trail. Double click, and this will be relatively simple. So let's set the blend mode to translucent and shading model to unlit. And we need to create a particle color node pipe the alpha to the opacity and hold down M and click to create a multiply, pipe in the color and set 5 as the multiplier and pipe that result into emissive color. This is done so save and close it out. Go back to the content browser and let's make a new folder called underscore effects. Inside, right-click and create a Niagara system. Click Next and select the Fountain template. Click Add and Finish. And let's call it NS underscore Trail. And double-click. Okay, inside here, make sure to follow exactly what I'm doing. So first, delete Shape Location. Delete Add Velocity. Delete Drag. And lastly, delete Sprite Renderer. Now instead, we want to add a Ribbon Renderer. And then over here, select the material we just created before. And I'm also going to pause the playback down here. Okay, the next steps are to change the various parameters. So starting from the top, in Spawn Rate, set it to 30 per second. And inside Initialize Particle, Set Lifetime Mode to Direct Set and set it to 2.5. And in Color Mode here next to the Color Vector, click the drop down and type in User and select. This allows us to set the color in the Blueprint instead. Next for everything below from Mass Mode, click on this U-Turn arrow thing to set it back to default. Then in Ribbon Width, do direct set and set it to 1.5. And then lastly, in gravity, let's do 0, 500, and 0. That's everything, so click save and close it down. Then to attach this Niagara system to the BP spinner, we will first add a scene component as a child under arm to end. Call it Niagara pause and move it 16 in Y location. Go back to the event graph and from event begin play, we need to do a spawn system attached. Move this over and drag in the Niagara pause and pipe it into the attach component and system template should be an S trail. Let's also save this as a variable Call it ns underscore trail. Compile and save as always. Now when we go over to the map 1, have your Zigsy map running and click play. You can see the trail is being emitted and tracks the movement. Of course the color is not being set yet, so we will do that in the next chapter. <laughs>